start recording. Okay, the last class quick recap. Okay, so in LWC, we were seeing about uh, LDS, lightning design system. There are two types of a lightning design system, form-based LDS, program-based LDS. So form-based LDS, we have seen examples with a view form, edit form, and the record form. And we use the public variable as well as the private variable in order to view this information or edit the information. Or once we update the record to capture into the JavaScript, we have seen a couple of examples for the form-based LDS. Um, Program-based LDS, there are two types of program-based LDS. One is the imperative method, and second is wire adapter programming. In imperative method, we have seen create, delete. This is a direct straightforward. How to use this create and uh, delete? Create record. It is a create record. And inside that, you will be having a record data. And then, then and catch. So using this, we have uh, created the record and we have deleted the record. For updating a record also, what we did is we used Apex class. So we created a one of the Apex class to pull the contact information and using the update record and using the wire method, we pull the data from client side to, uh, we pull the data from server side controller to client side controller. So, and we displayed on the LWC. So, but anyway, in the wire property, we have seen just an example for the update record. Also, we have a wire adapter programming, which is called as a, um, a great wire decorator. So we will see what is the decorator, what is the great wire, wire property and wire function. We will see these all thing today. Okay. So before going to the, so before going to um, wire, so let's understand we have a two types of form-based LDS and program-based LDS, right? So let's see the different use cases for when to use the form-based and when to use the programming-based. Let's see the different uh, use cases for the form-based and program-based. and then program based LDS, okay? So for, for we have a form based LDS, okay? So we have a programming based LDS also. In form based, we just can perform a basic operations, right? I can do the view form, I can do the edit form, I can do the record form, just a basic operation here. Can I perform any custom operation like data check before saving uh, the record or before before saving the record or before updating the record? I wanted to do some calculation. I wanted to do the. I wanted to cross verify the data. So can I do that using the uh, form based, or if I wanted to display some custom message? Can I do that with the form based? No, that is not possible. I cannot do the data check here. I can just cross verify. I can just create it. I can just do the delete. Or if there are any validation on the object, then only it will fire it. But I cannot write the custom logic or custom operation. I cannot implement it. So then in such cases, if you have to go ahead and you have to, you, you are using the imperative method. 
if I wanted to do the sub, some custom operation or custom validation, in that case, what we will do is we will go with the programming based LDS within that imperative method. So we will go with the imperative methods, right? Delete, create, um, uh, and one more thing, delete, create. Uh, so delete record is then error to go ahead and reuse that. So basically while deleting it, I wanted to, so I wanted to uh, cross verify some data or I wanted to show a message or I wanted to do some custom operations. In that case, I can use the imperative method, either create, either delete or either update. That is the first difference. And next one, in form base, if I, if I like, I do not have any control, the complete control of life of system. That means I do not have any control on the complete system. Whatever the portion of that I can do it, I can do that portion. I, I do not have a complete life cycle. Like I can create a record or delete a record, but after creating a record, if I wanted to cross verify, those all things I cannot do. No control on the life cycle. Or no control, I can say complete control will not be there. I cannot go ahead and I cannot use this for any type of custom validation, custom messages. So whenever we wanted to customize a validation, custom message, then we have to go with the imperative methods. That is a, one of the scenario in real time. So this is the real time, like whenever I have a most of the custom logic, if I wanted to do, uh, basically when I say most of the customization, like I have an account record here. Right, so when I open, it opens the complete standard layout, it, it opens. But if this is a complete layout itself is a LWC, there is a no standard. In that case, if I wanted to do some custom validation or custom messages, in, the, in those scenarios, what we can do is we can go with the imperative methods. Now let's go ahead and understand what is the wire. What is a wire? What is a wire? It is a inbuilt service in LWC. It is a inbuilt service in LWC. What is that means to read SFDC backend data, which is already inbuilt by the sales force. The purpose of wire is to read SFDC backend data. This is the main purpose that whenever we wanted to read the data from SFTC, we have to use, when I say from SFTC, that means from Apex class, right? If you wanted to directly read it from object, that is a different scenario. We do not need a wire there. If I wanted to read the data from Apex, which is nothing but a, a SFDC backend data. So if I wanted to read the, any data from the Apex class, then we have to use the wire. So inside this wire, let's see what are the properties. There are different type of properties we have. The first one is LWC reactive service. The first one property is LWC reactive service. This is to read a SFDC data. It's a reactive service. Okay. And the second one is 
second service is completely based on the lightning data service which is a lds second one is completely based on the lightning data service so in lightning we had a concept called data service we have this uh, concept called data service so this is built on completely on the lightning data service and next one it uses the edgerate wire in javascript to read the data and this wire is available only in ui api namespace we cannot use it anywhere this is only in the ui api namespace right whenever we are implementing the javascript that time only we use the edgerate wire and what is the use of this to read the back end data right writing a record in the back end data is currently not available that means you you cannot uh, write in by using the lds or lightning design system any of those methods if you do not if you do not have the capability to retrieve the data in that case we go with the apex class right so in order to read that data we use at the rate by so that means at the rate wire is only to read the data not to write the data we cannot use wire to write the data this is only to read the data so let's see what is the syntax for the at the rate wire so basically at the rate wire uh, service contains the two steps the first one is the import a wire adapter and the second one is decorate the wire decorate the wire whenever we wanted to use the wire service we have to do two steps any time whatever the logic we if we wanted to implement the at the rate right wire there are two steps which we have to do the first one is import the wire service or wire adapter and then second one we have to decorate the wire these are two steps to perform if we are going with the wire how to import uh, first whenever we start the javascript on the top we write it as how do we import it we write import and open close bracket wire and then we'll do the from lwc so this is the standard syntax for importing the wire service or wire adapter okay again the wire adapter consists of different part it it consists of adapter id it consists of adapter module it consists of adapter config and the last one is it consists of property or function whenever you see an import 
in JavaScript. Inside this wire, inside this wire, these are the ones which will perform it. We cannot see this either in writing the code or while implementing the logic. We cannot see this. This is not a visible by Salesforce developer. But whenever we implement a wire, inside the wire, these are which these are the ones which are going to play a major role, which we cannot see. We just see a word called wire. That's it. And we don't know what happens with the wire. But actually, when we write the wire, these all things it try to capture the information, adapter ID, adapter module, adapter config, property, or function. Now let's understand what are these. Adopter ID is nothing but the identifier. The identifier of the wire property, wire adapter. So basically, when we write the wire, this is one of the option inside the wire we have an adapter ID. It's a unique, every time it generates a unique ID. It's kind of a in lightning aura, we have a aura ID, right? So we, whenever we implement any logic inside that, we give the aura ID as a unique, right? So this is also adapter ID is, which will generate a unique ID for each of them. For each individual wire, it will generate a unique one in the component. So that is basically system will generate it. We will not do anything. Automatically system or component will generate one ID for every wire. We'll have the unique ID. Whenever we wanted to import a wire, uh, import a wire in our LWC project, whichever the project, like there are two components, then we write two wires. So whenever we write a two wire, it, it generates an ID. So wire has an adapter ID first, like individual component will have the, their own ID. So this is automatically system or component will generate the adapter ID. Next, we'll go with the adapter module. Adapter module is basically, uh, this is a string format and the adapter ID is ID format, which is a identifier. Okay, next adapter module. What is the adapter module? What data it contains? It is basically, the identifier of the module. This is also identifier of the module. Just a second. So adapter module is nothing but the identifier, the identifier of the module. What it contains, it contains the wire adapter function in the format of namespace or module name. Namespace or module name. Right. So basically adapter module is every wire will have its module, uh, module name means a pre-written program, which has already been written inside the component or inside the Salesforce. Say, uh, maybe I can say that it is a Salesforce pre-written program. In wire module, we have the one of the module called, which is pre-written uh, program 
for the sales force. We do not touch this one. We do not touch anything inside this or we do not pass anything inside this. But this is something, it, it, this is also unique. It will try to save the namespace or module name. But the, whenever we write, this is the one of the module, it will try to implement it. As a developer, uh, if we are, whenever we are writing the LWC, we do not have any access to touch this area. We do not touch it. We simply write at the right wire and we will create one function and we'll pass the data. That's it, our work. But this is something which is a pre-written program to interact with the database. It's a pre-written program. This is one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the functionality which is there inside the wire, which will try to interact with the Salesforce database. Next one we have a adapter config. Adapter config is basically an object. What is this? It is a configure. It is a configuration object specified to the wire adapter. Configuration object property values can be either string or a references to object. What is that means? So, configuration property, configuration object. Property values can be either a string either a string or references to objects or field imported. We do sometimes import um, Apex class or import uh, field, right? So what we do, sometimes we do at the rate salesforce slash schema. We import it, right? Or at the rate lightning UI. So these things, whatever we import it, where it is going there, this is the adapt configurator. Uh, adapter config is the one which is going to handle whenever we write at the rate Salesforce schema or at the rate Lightning UI, this is the part which is going to take care of it. So this is this is the way we uh, where we config, we pass the data, right? As a developer, we can pass adapter config object. That's what we are doing it, right? When I, after importing it, if I wanted to pass any data, I can pass it. This is the place uh, where we call the method. Um, like last time, if you remember, we have seen um, importing like a object, importing object fields or importing the wire method using the at the rate wire. We were calling the Apex class method, and we also call the uh, fields, object fields. And we were passing back the uh, modified value to the API. So these all we have done it, right? So this is where exactly goes. It goes to the adapter config. Those are, it's nothing but a kind of a method, method name, comma, parameter. Uh, that is whatever we do, right? So it's called as a adapter co conflict. Adapter conflict is nothing but a simply, these are the configuration that we attach to a wire. And next one, we have a property or function. Property or function. So this is basically a private property. A private property. Or we write a function. 
that receive the stream of the data from wire service, right? So basically we can write a program in a wire two ways. One is property or function. Now what is this property or function? We are also using the word called decorator, right? Before the wire or before the API, if I wanted to declare a public variable, what we do at the rate API, the public variable name. Or if I wanted to declare a wire, we use the at the rate wire. But what is, what is the word called decorator? What is this decorator? Basically decorator is nothing but, so basically decorator is nothing but, these are the additional programs. These are the additional, additional programs that we add on existing is called as a decorator. If I on, I have already existing program, okay? On top of the program, if I wanted to add some additional program to existing one. So in that case, what we do, we declare a variable or we declare a wire method function. And on top of that, we add this condition. So additional program to LWC are called as a decorator. Or I can say extra program, additional programs. We call them as a decorators. So if I have to say a simple example for the decorator, um, like in Indian Army or Navy or Air Force, any of them, we use a word called as a highly decorated officer. Whenever we see them, uh, either Army or either Navy or Air Force, when they dress up perfectly as a army or perfectly as a name, we will, anybody say them like a highly decorated officer. What is that means? They also have a decorated. That means basically any officer who got a lot of medals or uh, whenever you see uh, an army officer wearing a uniform and on his chest, Uh, there is a, some batches, right? Or if you see any occasional flag hosting or any occasion or republic location or any occasion, the army officer comes with a full decorated uniform, not like a normal uniform. He, he has with the stars on the shoulder and name plates and there are number of batches. He comes with all those stars on his shoulder, uh, shoulder name plates, on the chest, all the medals, he wear the medals uh, will be displayed there. A lot of badges and a lot of metal, medals uh, hanging on his uniform. There are a few of them will be hanging there on his shoulder, different colors, they will wear different colors. Right? Multiple places, so they wear the badges. You will see these kind of a, uh, or you will have a parliament patches. They will have a parliamentary patches. He will have a different, different icons on his uniform. So we call them as a decoration. Whenever any type of government or official celebrations comes, they will decorate themselves. And then they go to the any type of function or institution. Without that decoration, they won't go. Army or whoever is experienced army is there. If we call them for any occasion, they first dress up whatever the medals they have. Right, so if we call any ceremony, you will see every officer, including every army person will be decorated. They will decorate themselves. So basically same way here, 
to an adopter, you can add a lot of decorators, right? You have a normal program. On top of the program, if you wanted to implement some customization, you can add a lot of decorators. There are three decorators are available right now. Whenever you wanted to add an extra program, we call them as a decoration. Here, wire can also be a decorator. What is the decorators are available? There are two decorators are available. One is the wire property and another one is the wire function. These are the two. Inside the wire, these are the two decorators. Inside the wire, we have a two decorators, which is called as a property. And another one is a function. This is within the wire. This is within the wire. So basically, wire service can be decorated with the number one, wire a property, number two, wire a function. So a wire, we can decorate with the property or a function. Let's understand the structure of wire. So now we got the clear picture of the wire. Let's understand the structure of the wire. To the inbuilt program, how do we add additional on top of it? That is, whenever we, for example, whenever we wanted to add an additional program, right? How do we add it? And basically, we add it at the rate of wire. So we decorate it, right? And then we add the adopter ID and adopter config. And then we have a property or a function. Property or a function. So this way, we decorate the program. Any additional program is called as a decorator. Now, whenever you are writing a LWC component, right? On that, if you use a wire, that's also an additional program, right? Hence, wire is also a decorator. So we have read wire has the two decorators, right? Basically, wire has the two decorators, but wire itself is a decorator, right? Wire itself is also a decorator. Do not get confused. Wire itself is a decorator because this is an additional program which we are adding to the Salesforce Lightning Web component. So when I say wire itself is a decorator means, let me count from starting, okay? Okay, so whenever we are writing an additional program on the uh, custom program, like whatever the existing program we have on top of it, I'm writing the additional program. There are the standard LWC has a three decorators. What are those? At the rate track, at the rate API, at the rate wire, right? The standard LWC, when I say standard, as a defined in a ECMA7, as a defined in a ECMA7 has a three decorators. At the rate track, at the rate API, at the rate wire. These are additional program because we are writing our own program right on that we are importing this importing is nothing but the the additional program either I can use the track or API or by using this we are either importing it or adding it to the existing program. So wire itself is a decorator. So now 
uh, as per the ECNS 7, we have a three decorators at the red track, at the red API, at the red wire. Now, again, inside this wire, again, there are two decorators, property and a function. Right? And inside this wire, we have a property and function. So as we are discussing about the track API, let me give you overview why to use the Edirate track. Edirate track is basically to tracking any changes. This is, first of all, this is a private variable. Private variable used within the component. So why we are using this in order to track any changes that happens within the component, we wanted to track those changes. So that's the reason it's also called as a private reactive property. That's the reason it's called as a private reactive property. And next, coming to the at the rate API. At the rate API is a public variable. Public variable. So whenever we wanted to uh, expose uh, a variable, if I wanted to expose a variable to the another component, in that case, we use the at the rate API and declare the variable. And at the rate wire, we just saw that this is to read the Salesforce data. To read the Salesforce data, this is also called as a reactive mode. Right? So, and uh, what are these consist of wire? We have seen that. Let's go ahead and see one example, how to write a property, how to write a function. We all know how to write a track, how to implement an API, we all know. But inside this wire, there are two decorators are there, right? So how to implement a property, how to implement a function, let's go ahead and see that. Let me open the Visual Studio. Let me check whether it is connected to my org. Open default org. So in the meantime, the last class which we were working on, okay, so it is connected to my org, that's good. So this is the class which we were working, displaying the contact, phone number, name, right? And uh, here we have done the wire. Let's use the same thing. And this is calling the Apex class. Uh, right, this Apex class has a search. Okay, based on the search, I'm getting the data. So let me use same method, same logic. Like whenever I search it, I wanted to get the contact information. Let's use the same method, but we'll create a new lightning component. Control shift P. SFDC, create lightning web component. So let's say LWC underscore 2305. And this is, uh, we are creating a wire a property or function. We'll create both of them in one component so that we'll understand the difference. Yeah, this is the place. Right. So first implement the HTML, then we'll come to the JavaScript. So I wanted to use the same, whenever we search it, I wanted to get the result. 
So basically, what I can do is uh, y two, yeah, lightning card, right? So this is what I wanted to display here. I uh, let me explain it. So basically, I'm going to implement the both of them. Uh, let's say that search a contact. Let's assume that this is a wire property. Or function. Right. So and I have an input variable which I'm searching here. And my first My first one will be my first one will be wire property. Okay. So now I'm implementing a wire property, then we will see the wire function. So wire property actually last class, whatever we have implemented, that is the wire property. By default, uh, the LWC, anybody initial stages, they all go with the property. That is a by default uh, flow. Right? So this is the wire property. So what we are doing it, contact, we are getting the contact from the JavaScript data and we are giving an item name and then we are displaying the contact name, phone and this. Um, then I do not need the data table, but that's okay. Let's keep it. Right, so now I have the data clear. So let me go to the JavaScript. Let's save this. Let me go to JavaScript. So I have to use the wire. Let's use. I have to use the wire inside this function. The first thing is that I have to declare search key. Then I have to handle change. Event, let's open please. Okay. And whenever we are searching here, I wanted to store that into the search key, right? So basically this dot search key equal to, so if I wanted to get the data, even dot target dot value, right? So I'm getting the data. Now this is a common for both of them, property or function till here it is common. The next part, whatever we are doing it, it, wire we have taken, but I wanted to get the, I have to import a method first. Right, I have to import a method. Now, the change will be here between the property and So let me declare that first. This is a property. That means this is a wire a property. And next one. Wire a function. Okay. So in wire property, what is the standard way to a uh, standard syntax for wire property? A great wire. And inside this, we have to pass the find contact. Right? And find contact has the search text. 
So what I will do is I'll pass the search text. How do I pass it in the JSON format? I have to declare the same parameter name and I have the values in search key. So dollar search key and then I have a contact. Right. This is the same thing which we have declared yesterday also. Yesterday, right, same thing we have declared. And this is the, uh, whatever we are getting the data, we are looping through that particular variable. And inside that we have a data and error, we are doing it, right? So let's remove this because I do not need the data table. Right? So where a property is nothing but you are passing the decorator, calling the method and passing the variable, getting the result. So simply if I have to say, Let me open the paint. Right. So why a property syntax is Why a property syntax is you have to first thing you have to use the decorator. And then you have to call a method. This is the Apex method, call a Apex method. And then you have to pass the parameters if there are any parameters, pass the parameters. And then finally we'll get the result. Right? This is the syntax for the viray property. Viray property uh, just get the information and it will store the result in one variable. Right? That's it. It doesn't do any calculation or anything. Once I get the data in HTML, we'll try to get the data contact.data or contact.error, right? Let me save this. Let's deploy this to source to arc. Copy. Now let me go back to the developer console. Right, this is the application. Uh, let me put our C column, our component name, save it. Fine, that's it. No preview. Right, if I'm typing any, see, if I type anything, right? Uh, ARTH outdoor song. So it is getting the result that should be fine. Now this is coming, right? This is the property that we are displaying. UI level, you will not know whether it is a property defined or function. I'll show you that how, how why it is different. So this is the viray property. Now viray function, how we declare the viray function? For viray function, we write at the rate wire right uh, 
and then we'll pass the date, we'll pass the method, calling the method. And then we have to pass the text. Till this point, it is same. Calling the method, passing the parameters is same. Now the change is here, contact. Now inside this contact, the format will be, I'll be having a error comma data. Error comma data. This is the, uh, this is how it, it has to be displayed, error comma data. It should not be data comma error. It should be always error comma data because that is standard defined by the sales force. Right? Inside this, we'll have if condition and then we'll have else. So both will be there. If the data is, I have a data, then I wanted to store into the data because I, I even if I have to pass this data to the H, HTML, I need to store it somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll declare on data. And then also I have to store the error. So on error. So these are the two variables which will be played in the function via a function. Now, if I have the data, if I have the data, then what I wanted to do, I wanted to simply capture and put it into the this dot con data equal to the data. Else, if it is an error, then I have to use this dot on error equal to simply setting the error. And also along with the setting the error, I'll just make sure that instead of nullify or instead of sometimes what happens is it goes with the error and this con data does not have any information because I, I, if I declare equal to here, undefined, then it will not break the system. But here I have just declared the contact. So in case if I have an error, I just wanted to say contact, this dot contact equal to undefined. So that I'm safe if it is fails also. Now I have written the logic here because wire function itself is handling the data and error. So when it is handling the data and error, how do we implement the wire function in HTML? This is template, this is a template. Let me implement another template. Okay, so this is, Wire function, right? Okay, so this is a wire function. So, how to implement a wire function template? Let's declare the template first. Okay. Inside this template, here we were doing the for each contact that data, but I already did that here. So now I have the information in con data. So what I can do is template for each con data. And then for each of them, I wanted to declare a per item. Per item equal to, let's say that CD or record or EC. Okay. So for each of them, I have a REC. 
Now I need not to loop this again, like putting all of this. What I can do is simply, uh, let me put this paragraph. So here my record name is REC. And instead of name, just to differentiate it, um, let's say that contact name or by the function. Where a function contact name equal to contact name, right? Sending the lightning card, it's sending the template should be fine. So now let me go back to the, let's deploy this to the source. It should be red dot name, right? Oh, I have not mentioned red dot name. Okay. REC dot name, yeah. Control shift P, deploy this to source all. Okay, it's deployed. Let's go to the here. At the right, at the right by target property or method through an error during the value provision optimization. This is not defined. Okay. Control S, Control Shift P, deploy this source to work. So let me add here in between this just to differentiate paragraph. Right. Uh, deploy this to source org. Or what I can do is paragraph, write a function. And this paragraph. Write a property. Control shift P, deploy the source to work. Okay, refresh. For trading data. Yeah, refresh error. LWC component concept cannot read the property of undefined reading data. Training description where property. What is the wrong here? I'm doing the for each REC dot ID right data let me do one thing let me comment out this piece Do this should be apply this source to work. Oh, okay, okay, I understood. Contact, let's put the contacts here. Control should be apply this to source work. Refresh. 
Okay, so the problem is both of the variable names were same. Like wire property has the same name and the wire function was having the same name. So I just changed the name. So now if I write a, so it is giving the wire function here. Let me uncomment out this piece. Control S, Shift P. Deploy this resource R. Okay, done. Refresh. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting a wire property, I'm getting a wire function. So both I will not be seeing any differences if I use the wire property or wire function, I'll not be seeing any differences here. But the thing is that while implementing the code, while writing the code, this is what the different in the JavaScript. If, I'm in, if anybody has anybody has if we are reading the anybody existing code and if you see that there is a function there is a name of the um, uh, function and then it, it has an error command data that means they have implemented a wire function or if it is a just a function name then that means they have implemented with the wire property so these are the two ways which we can implement the at the right wire Next, next topic will be LWC events. Okay, LWC events, like we have seen the LWC events in Aura event. So event is nothing but um, any information or notification passed by a browser or a platform or component or application, browser platform or component application or any of them, like if they are passing a notification, if they are passing a information regarding any action like on the button click action or on change action, any action is called as a basically it's called event. So in Lightning Aura, we have learned our, our application event and component event. These two events we have seen. But in LWC, there is no event classification. There is no event classification. LWC uses the standard DOM events. Standard DOM events. DOM means um, HTML event. Like usually DOM is called as a HTML. So LWC uses the standard DOM events that are related to HTML. It does not use any lightning events, component event or application event. LWC does not use it. It only has the DOM events. So there are DOM event propagations. So there are DOM event prop propagation in LWC. So basically in LWC, how DOM event propagation flows? How it flows the DOM event propagation? So there are different ways like the first one is create and dispatch. Create and dispatch events. And then they, they have a list events. And it has handle events. Handle events are again, the, it is a two type of them. Uh, one is a declarative. Uh, 
and then the second one is program programmatically that is a handle event and next one the fourth one is event propagation event propagation event propagation is uh, this is within the lwc um, if we are talking about LWC calling in the Aura component or Visual Force, so again, the component calls from the Visual Force, or if I'm doing it some quick action or anywhere, if I'm calling this LWC, it does not work. Within the LWC only, event propagation works. That means parent to child. Parent to child. If we have this kind of a relation, then only the event propagation works. And the next and last one is event communication. Event communication. This is uh, basically unlink component communication. Unlink component communication means there are two ways to communicate between the components. If I wanted to implement a communication between the two components that are not in the same DOM, it might be in the different tree. It's not in the same uh, DOM tree. They are in the different tree. But I wanted to have the communication between those two. In that case, what we will do is we will go with the event communication. Within this event communication, we have a two types are there. Single library. Single library that follows the. It follows the. Public. So it follows the publish and subscriber subscribe pattern so it's kind of a pub sub you can say so single library that follows the publish and subscribe pattern which is a pub sub and the second one is lightning message channel we have a lightning message channel So these are the different propagation that we can use it when, whenever we are implementing. So in real time, um, most of, I have seen everybody using the publish and subscribe pattern and event propagation, lightning message channel for a few of the components that I have seen. Create and dispatch event that is a normal. So for any event, the flow will be first step for the flow is create and dispatch the event, list event, handle event, event propagation, and event communication. This is the flow for DOM event propagation. We'll see tomorrow what are these and in detail about the LWC events. Okay. Let me stop the recording.